Welcome back to the Global Intelligence Knowledge Network Weekly Intelligence Wrap-Up. I'm Neil Bisson, the Director of Global Intelligence Knowledge Network and Retired Intelligence Officer with the Canadian Security Intelligence Service. A lot of intelligence starts with the collection of information and then analyzing it to better understand if there are biases or inconsistencies. That's what this podcast is all about. With my years of experience and training as an investigator and as an analyst, I'm going to try and provide some insight into current news stories so you can see it through the lens of an intelligence professional and hopefully gain a better appreciation and understanding of what the world of intelligence is and how it affects your day-to-day life. I want to send out a thanks to all the great responses that I've had so far. I've really enjoyed doing the show, and I hope to continue to do it. It's been a busy week in the world of intelligence and national security, and a lot of our stories are based in Canada. So let's get started. Today's first story involves a critical decision made by Air Canada that has raised some eyebrows and sparked concern about aviation, security, and geopolitical tensions. Air Canada recently made headlines by awarding a major maintenance contract to a Hong Kong-based company. This decision has not only raised concerns about potential espionage, but also reveals broader implications of outsourcing maintenance to a country with which Canada has, well, let's just say, some strange relations in recent years. I'm going to highlight some of the key concerns that I have here. So the first one is security risks. The article that appeared in Global News underscores concerns about Chinese espionage, electronic bugging of aircraft, and the broader implications for Canada's critical infrastructure security. If we take into consideration China's track record of foreign interference and espionage, the decision to grant access to Canadian planes raises some huge red flags, pun intended, about our own aviation security. Two, geopolitical tension. With the escalating tensions between Canada and China, allegations of foreign interference and cyber attacks, does it really make sense to outsource maintenance to a Hong Kong company at this time? I mean, the aviation industry has seen some real issues writ large when it comes to plane safety. All you have to do is take a look at some of the issues where doors are falling off of planes mid-flight and other planes are being forced to land because of technical and mechanical issues. Is no one at Air Canada seeing the potential danger of having a company based in Hong Kong under Chinese rule conducting maintenance on such critical of our transportation infrastructure? This brings us to the third question. Air Canada is emphasizing HACO is certified and has a history of high safety standards. But in reality, one of the major considerations for Air Canada is lowering costs to make profit. But what's the price of having the major and one of the only airlines in Canada risking the lives of Canadians to a foreign country that has continuously shown that their interests do not align with ours? This brings up the issue of whether the decision of Air Canada should be scrutinized by the Canadian intelligence community to verify what the risks are. We have already seen that China is willing to steal intellectual property and conduct cyber espionage and attacks against Canada. How could providing access to a large portion of airline transportation be nothing more than a reckless move? I'm certain there must be an American or European company that would be able to conduct the same maintenance without the same level of risk. This is not the first time Canada has made a decision that looks bad to our Five Eye partners. There was a time when Canada was willing to have Huawei be the company that ensured all of our 5G infrastructure was installed in Canada. And we know how that turned out. I wonder what considerations our Five Eye partners in the intelligence community will make for future travel plans that include flying with an airline that sends its planes to Hong Kong for maintenance, or if they start to consider Air Canada as a possible compromised form of travel or worse, a potential threat to their airspace. This brings up some interesting questions regarding the role of an intelligence agency or service in regards to making recommendations to critical infrastructure like transportation or airlines. Should a company that is partially owned by the Canadian government not have some responsibility to potential national security concerns that come with which company they choose to do their maintenance with? What happens if Canada's relationship with China continues to deteriorate? Should we be prepared for delays in scheduled maintenance or worse? Should we start to expect mishaps like the ones that have been happening with Boeing planes? As a former intelligence professional, the potential to have your travel and then your conversations monitored by a foreign enemy state is not an incentive to try to collect prestige miles. Let's hope Air Canada comes to their senses and finds a maintenance company that isn't attached to the hip to a foreign power that hasn't shown that it has its interests aligned with Canada's. Okay, let's leave the potentially not so friendly skies and turn our attention to the latest revelations from the Foreign Interference Commission inquiry. On Thursday, David Mignot, the Director of the Canadian Security Intelligence Services, 
provided testimony at the public inquiry into foreign interference in the 2019 and 2021 federal election. In an unprecedented revelation, Director Vigneault presented intelligence suggesting that the Chinese government attempted to funnel approximately $250,000 in relation to Canadian elections. This is another aspect that some Canadians may not have been aware of in relation to foreign interference. Essentially, paying for candidates to align with Beijing's agenda. The director's testimony provides some insight into terminology that's used by the service, specifically the term threat actors, which is used to indicate individuals associated with the Chinese government who are covert, covertly working to advance their interests through Canadian democratic institutions. According to the CSIS summary, 11 political candidates and 13 political staff members were either implicated in or impacted by this network of threat actors. Among them, seven candidates of the Liberal Party of Canada and four candidates of the Conservative Party of Canada. I'm glad to see that the information provided demonstrates that this issue crosses the floor of Parliament and affects both parties. This happens, this helps to emphasize the foreign interference, that foreign interference is not just directed at one party in favor of another, and hopefully shows Canadians that regardless of the party they back, foreign interference may have an impact on their party loyalties. Director Vigneault cautioned that the information provided was an intelligence summary and not a comprehensive report. On Thursday, before the director gave his testimony, I spoke with CTV News about what to expect and what Canadians should be worried about in regard to foreign interference. I referenced that the director would be somewhat limited in what he could provide openly because a lot of information is highly classified. That information comes from many aspects of this investigation, including the sources and the techniques used to conduct it. I agree with Director Vigneault's comments that this issue, much like many national security and intelligent issues, foreign interference needs, to, needs more attention and more resources need to be focused on it. I may sound like a broken record, but the intelligence culture in Canada has taken a backseat to every issue that both government and politicians feel deserve more attention. And this is to Canada's detriment. Foreign interference is only one small piece of the national security and intelligence puzzle that has an effect on our economy, the perception, the perception of Canada in, on the world stage, technological and scientific breakthroughs, as well as many other aspects of our lives. In the coming weeks, Judge Hogue, who has access to classified intelligence that cannot be disclosed to the public, will be reviewing all of the classified information and will prepare a comprehensive report by May 3rd. Let's hope the report provides Canadians a better understanding of the threat of foreign interference and difficulty that Canadian intelligence community has identifying and combating foreign interference with the resources they currently have. The revelations of Director Vigneault's testimony serves as a sober reminder of the challenges we face in safeguarding our electoral process. Okay, let's switch gears here and focus on more global aspect of global intelligence although this story also has some Canadian connections. So in an article in The Guardian this week, recent revelations came from Indian and Pakistani intelligence oper operatives that shed light on India's research and analysis ring, or RAW, and their involvement in the assassination across the border into Pakistan. These operations are aimed at eliminating terrorists living on foreign soil, with a particular focus on targeting those considered hostile to India, including Sikh separatists, associated with the Khalistan movement. According to intelligence sources, RAW's operation in Pakistan involves sophisticated techniques, much like those employed by agencies such as Israel's Mossad and Russia's former KGB, now the SBR. Sleeper cells, primarily based in the United Arab Emirates, or the UAE, are allegedly responsible for orchestrating these extrajudicial killings often recruiting local criminals or jihadists to carry out the assassinations. The collaboration between RAW operatives and criminal elements highlight the complex connections underlying these covert operations. Payments, communication, and coordination reportedly take place across multiple countries, including the UAE, Nepal, and the Maldives, underscoring the international scope of RAW's activities. So how does this affect Canada and Western countries? The implication of RAW's actions extend beyond the borders of South Asia. I have previously written about the discussions in the media that the allegations of RAW's involvement in targeting killings in Canada and the United States. These cases include the murder of Sikh activist Hardeep Singh Nijar in Vancouver 
and an attempted assassination in New York, Gupatwat Singh Panun. Both incidents have raised concern about India's foreign policy approach and its impact on diaspora communities. This activity poses significant challenges for Western countries with close strategic and economic ties to India. I spoke on last week's podcast about how India is now blaming rogue agents within Ra as being responsible for the hiring of a hitman to kill Panun and are still denying any part in the murder of Nijar. These extrajudicial killings and attempted assassination raise question about international law and ethical considerations surrounding intelligence sharing agreements with India by Western intelligence agencies and services. Ra's alleged involvement in extrajudicial killings underscores the need for transparency, accountability, and ethical government activity in the pursuit of national interests. There hasn't been much in the media concerning the murder of Nijar since the rogue Ra agent hit story hit. My major concern is that politics doesn't overshadow the hard work of the RCMP and CSIS in doing what they need to do to try to get to the truth of this investigation. For more on the Nijar murder and other intelligence-driven assassinations, go to www.globalintelligenceknowledgenetwork.com. There you'll find articles, blogs, dossier files on international intelligence agencies and more. It's really a great resource for anyone who's interested in all things intelligence. I also do a podcast with two former intelligence professionals, Alan Dredenik and Phil Gursky, called Spies Like Us. Just like this podcast, You can find it on Amazon Music, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or just ask your smart speaker for the latest episode of Global Intelligence Knowledge Network, Weekly Intelligence Wrap-Up, and Spies Like. I want to thank you for listening to this week's episode of Global Intelligence Knowledge Network, Weekly Intelligence Wrap-Up. Please join me as we continue to unravel the latest developments shaping the world of intelligence and security. In the meantime, please comment, like, and subscribe. Until then, stay curious. Stay informed and stay safe.